greetings to all of you. It is so great to be here with you, and I am so proud and honored to have been invited to present in this conference. I'm a huge fan of this conference. I've been attending for years, and uh, this is the first time I've presented solo. I've presented a couple of other times with some colleagues, so I'm very excited to be here to share with you. And um, I thought and thought and reached out to my PLN to ask what would be a catchy title that I could use for this session because there are so many things I wanted to talk about. And she suggested the concept of a credit card. And that's what I'm going with today. So welcome to all of you and let's get going. This is the first slide on my live binder, and I'm going to take just a, just a couple of minutes to do a quick demo with you to show you how to find your way around that live binder. But you can see that my description is that I want all of you to be able to claim your superhero credit card and use it to build your PLN through fantastic resources that you can gain in free online webinars, virtual conferences, and all forms of social media. So I hope before the session is over, through the examples and some of the tips, you'll be able to see what's available, how you can get started, where to find it, and even some tips for choosing what might best match your own needs and learning style. Because the same thing doesn't work for everyone, as all of you know who are so actively involved in online learning. So today we're talking about charging up your superpowers by charging up your PLN. And that's a, that's a photo that I took with my friend Kim, who is in the room, um, one day when we did a presentation for Discovery Education. And it was a Halloween presentation. So we both dressed up, and I was able to capture this picture. And I thought it was perfect for our theme of the conference. This is your charge card, and it will be available in the slides that you will find in the live binder. We have a great bank. It's highly reputable. It's the Superhero Bank. And your name is Superhero Education Leader. And the great thing is that it never expires. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have a credit card like that? And it is a Texas VSN credit card, so they're highly reliable. And the great thing is, once you start using this credit card, your interest will compound daily based on your investments of time and energy and no expiration date. So I want to tell you about the Live Binder. And I'm going to post this link again here. But I'm, I'm going to do a quick jump into application sharing. And I hope it doesn't cause too much of a bandwidth strain for you. I won't be in there long. So if you drop out, please come back. So I'd like to just do a quick demo of the Live Binder. So you can kind of see the layout. So this is what it should look like. If you click on that link and open it in your browser, that's what you'll see. And with a Live Binder, there are tabs and there are sub-tabs. So we are on the first tab. And this is the first thing you see when you log into the page. The links on a live binder are all live and active. So you can see that you can actually scroll on that link. And that's a real conference link. Occasionally, I've put in images if the, if the website wouldn't load. So if it's an image, I've left the link for you. So you don't need to take any notes on links in this session because they're all in the live binder. So when you click on a tab, look at what happens all of the sub-tabs open up. So you can see there are tons of resources here in this Live Binder for you. And 
you can click on any one of those tabs and that page will open up for you. So one other tip about this, if you haven't used Live Binders or maybe you haven't used them recently, there is a new feature that's called Table of Contents and you find it with this little eye that's up at the top of your Live Binder page and it says Show Table of Contents. I love this feature because it creates automatically a table of contents for everything you have in the binder. So if you can't tell quite by the short titles on the tabs what that's going to be, you don't want to spend your time just click, click, clicking through all the tabs, jump into this table of contents and scroll on down until you find the link that you're, you think you're interested in looking at and then just click on that link. And then to close that um, uh, table of contents, you can just go back to your tab. So today I'm going to be talking about free webinars, some great friends of mine who have joined me for webinars virtually, and free virtual conferences, and of course, the first virtual conference is our very own Speaks Volumes conference with the theme of superhero leadership. But I have some other things I want to share with you, and I'm just going to do glimpses of each of these from the slides. So um, you're going to have to go exploring on your own after it's over because there are many, many more links than I'm going to actually talk about there. But I want to also share some other great resources for you of social media places and ideas and resources that you can access free professional development and you can create your own. And they're all in this tab under Twitter, TweetDeck, hashtags, Pinterest, Periscope, blogs, and more. And then finally, I have a link to LiveBinders information. If you've never used LiveBinders and you like what you see, feel free to go to these tabs. There are examples and there are tutorials and all kinds of things that will help you learn how to create a LiveBinder. And it is a free tool, so I encourage you to check that out. And finally, my last tab is the presentation slides for today. So if you'd like to have access to those later, you can just scroll on down that page and all of the slides are right there. So with that, I'm going to close my application sharing, and I hope we didn't lose too many of you, and jump right into my presentation. So very first thing I want to ask you, have, have you ever attended an online webinar? Because frequently I go to webinars and people will say, this is my first webinar. So I'd love for you to give a green check if you have, if your answer is yes, or a red X if your answer is no. And I'm really interested in seeing, looks like we have a lot of people who have um, attended live webinars, and that's great because it's such an awesome way to, to um, participate in prof professional development that you choose on your own. So we can see that there are 14 people who said yes, and a few who haven't quite figured out how to do the polling and said no, or said no response. So thanks for participating with that. The very first um, site uh, that offers free webinars for classroom teachers and educators that I have to talk about is my very own show. And this is a show that I host regularly. I created it back in 2009. So we've had six years of webinars, and it's called Classroom 2.0 Live. I won't be posting any of these links in the chat because they're all in the live binder. So just sit back and enjoy and see what you can pick up. 
this is an example of a live bind, or of a, a blog post that's in our archives. And every show we do, we archive. So you'll be able to see a live binder with all the resources, recording links, the iTunes U and YouTube recordings, you can see the chat log, and you can even get a professional development certificate. So I encourage you to come and join us some Saturday if you can. It's always on Saturday at noon Eastern time. And um, if you can't make it live, then be sure to check out the resources and join us uh, by watching a recording. And you can even get a PD certificate if you watch the recording. You can subscribe through an RSS feed if that's something that you'd like to do to follow bloggers. But you can also subscribe on iTunes U and YouTube so you can access things directly that way. Another one of my very favorite uh, tools for webinars is edweb.net. If you haven't discovered this, you need to check it out. EdWeb offers tons of webinars. There are probably five or six every single week. They're, they are all free. You just have to register to join the communities. And then you can have complete access to all of their resources and recordings. <clears throat> There are lots of communities. Just a quick glimpse, as you can see, I'm enthusiastic about EdWeb. And I have joined many of their communities. This is not all of them, but this is the ones that I have joined. And it took two slides to fit it all in. Every single one of these is a community. So you can um, join the community and then know that you're going to be able to not only access the recordings, but get notifications when new new webinars are coming up. They also provide certificates. If you view it live, you don't have to do anything. You get it automatically. If you view the recording, you have to take a little short quiz, and you'll get your certificate that way. This is one of the communities I'm in. Just to give you an idea of what that page looks like, this is the New Teacher Help community. Shannon Holden does an amazing job with several communities. And this community is really focused on helping new teachers get started. So he'll be talking about things not all technology related at all, but maybe classroom management or you know how to provide support to your students. Lots of things like that. So that's a, a, a site that you might want to check out. Whether you're a new teacher or whether you're a, a mentor and a supporter of teachers, because that might be just the thing they need. I also want to suggest a mini geek fest or a smackdown. My good friend Kim Thomas is in the room. And years ago, she and I decided we had to have a way to share all of the great new links and resources we were finding. So we decided to do a virtual mini geek fest once a month. And we would invite people to join us. And anyone who joined could share their link. So it's very much like a smackdown. And then we posted it all on a, on a wiki. So the wiki has um, links to all of the recordings and all of the resources we shared during that time. We've since gotten really busy, and we decided to stop offering it. But I wanted to share that with you, because it is a great way to bring technology to teachers in your school, and certainly in your online communities, too. We did it online in Blackboard Collaborate. So if you're an online instructor, you can easily host something like this and invite your participants to share with you. A great way to build your PLN and to meet new people. I mean, we had people joining us from other countries, Australia. And every once in a while, one of the creators of the site that we were sharing would pop in and join us. So it has lots of potential. Now I have another poll question for you, because I want to move on to talking about virtual conferences and online courses. Have you participated in any free virtual conference or online course prior to this conference? Give me a green check if the answer is yes, or a red X if the answer is no. 
and there's no surprise there because you are all online educators. So um, I am sure that you should all have participated in some. So 11 out of 17 of you said, yes, you have. And there's still a few of you not finding that uh, polling option to select it. OK, I'm going to um, clear those and move on to this next section. Now, I have tons of examples of virtual free conferences for you in the Live Binder. So go browsing through those. And almost, I think all of them have links to recordings from the sessions. This example is Library 2.0. And it's put on all of, the, all of these um, first few examples are from Steve Hargadon and the Learning Revolution. And he hosts probably easily 10 to 15 virtual conferences every year. And they have global participation and tons of great presenters. This one is the one that's organized and put on by librarians. It's always amazing. And they have one every year, as almost all of these conferences do. So I encourage you to take a look at them. One that's coming up before too much longer is the Global Education Conference. And that is always in November. It's always global. And there will be presenters from around the world and participants from around the world. So it's an awesome place to make connections with other educators. So share it with your students and take part in it and make some new connections to add to your PLN. Another conference I love talking about is the K-12 Online Virtual Conference. This one's a little bit different. I'm one of the organizers for this conference. And K-12 Online is an asynchronous conference. That means you don't have to log in at a certain time. But every day of the conference for two weeks, there are at least four recordings that get posted. And you can go log on to that any time that day or any time in the future and watch those recordings. The great thing is they're short. They're about 20 minutes long and very easy to catch in short snippets. And they're wonderful to share with other teachers. So you can all sit down together and watch one together and then talk about it. They do a really neat thing with professional development credit that I wanted to share with you. And that is that they encourage people to do something with what they've learned and then share it. So they have a link on their page that tells you how you might be able to share that. And I just made this a little bit bigger so you could actually see it. But if, if they have seen a presentation where the person talked about creating a voice thread or creating a, a podcast or maybe even a wiki, they're encouraged to create one and then share the link back with the group. So a short video is a possibility. And you could use any of these ideas when you're working with your teachers to encourage them to share out what they've learned. And it just helps to really embed that. So they could do a narrated digital story. They could do a PowerPoint presentation um, and maybe upload it to an online presentation tool. Google Apps provides us so many tools now that make it really easy for sharing. They could even do a mind map and create something that shows what they learned in that session. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of people beginning to do sketch noting. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but it's a very visual way to take notes. That would be a really fun thing for someone to do, to watch the recording and then take notes and create a sketch note. And you certainly can use um, tools like a live binder like Symbaloo, um, Digo. There's so many tools that you can use to share links. 
There are wonderful tools in Ellen Levine's Wiki 50 Web 2.0 Ways to Tell a Story. If you haven't seen that, I think he's even more than 50 now. But it has great ideas for every tool imaginable that you could use with your students. Also, ISTE Unplugged is another great place um, to access resources and make connections. And if you go to the ISTE conference in June, you're going to meet these people face to face. But they also do some online things that they call not at ISTE. And they had a tremendous presence this year and did a lot of sharing. In fact, the creators of Live Binders, uh, Barbara Talent and Tina Schneider, actually created a Live Binder of tons of links and resources and ideas that people were sharing about ISTE, even though they weren't there. So check those resources out. And the next tip I want to share with you is that really long one. Twitter, tweet deck, hashtags, Twitter chats, Pinterest, Periscope, blogs. Oh my. And I'm sure that's the way you feel sometimes. There's just so much out there. How do you know where to go and how do you learn how to use all of that? I love this uh, image, and it's in the live binder, but it's sort of a little bit distorted in this slide because I wanted to make it, it's supposed to be round shaped, but I wanted to make it big enough so at least some of the words are partially readable. It's not really meant to be read in this platform, but I loved it because it just captures that whole idea that there are so many social media tools available to us. We don't have to use them all. We don't have to use even 10 of them. We can pick the ones that work for us and use those. And so I hope that through some of the links that I have included in my live binder, that you'll start exploring some. Maybe pick one new tool that you've never tried before. Try it out and see if that works for you. So. You need a way to organize all of this professional learning that you're going to be doing. So I'd like to know if you use a Twitter management tool like TweetDeck. And that's assuming, of course, that you uh, use Twitter, because you don't need a management tool for Twitter if you don't use it. Great. Feel free. Though there is nothing wrong with the red X, and that because that makes me very excited that I can introduce you to something that you might not already know. So give me a red X if you don't use a management tool, and a green check if you do. And it might not be TweetDeck. There are many of them out there. But I'm going to talk a little bit about TweetDeck, and I included some other ones in the Live Binder. Excellent. I'm going to go ahead and post those results just so we can see what that's looking like. So there are 35% uh, of you that have not used a management tool, and only a couple of you that have. And again, I see that there are still a few that either aren't using the polling tool or who may have even stepped away. So thank you so much for that. So. <clears throat> There are just a lot of, uh, Twitter can be overwhelming uh, if you're a regular user of Twitter and you're trying to use it online or even on your mobile device, your iPhone, your iPad, any of those things. That, that main column of your feed from all the people you follow just flies by. I mean, it's hard to even stop one to catch it. So. Um, you're going to be hearing, and if you're not using Twitter, I really want you to think about starting that. It is one of the best tools I have ever used for accessing resources and people for my own professional learning. And I've included a number of links in the Live Binder about how you can get started with Twitter. If you're not sure where to start and what to do, there are videos and tutorials and names of people to connect with, all of that in the Live Binder. 
But you can see from this example that there are lots of things being shared on Twitter. So many people think, why would I want to use Twitter? People just talk about what they had for breakfast, or um, they're on their way to the lake, or they have a new puppy, or things like that. And yes, it's true. There is some personal sharing on Twitter, and that's wonderful because it's a way to get to know the people that you're connected with. But it's so much more than that. And people are sharing links to websites and tools, and they're asking questions. And it, there's nothing as exciting as posting a question and getting a response. And at first, when you first start doing it, it may just be one response. Or it may take a while to get that first response. But if you respond back to anyone who responds to you, they're going to keep doing it. And it's just so um, confirming to know that you've got some connection there of people that share your interests and your passions that are willing to collaborate with you. So I strongly encourage you to get on Twitter if you haven't. This is a photo of my tweet deck. And it's something that I use from my desktop, not from my browser. And I love it because TweetDeck allows you to create columns for anything you're really interested in following. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab a tool here for just a second and um, show you right here at the top of each column is a hashtag. Those are hashtags that I follow that I don't want to miss. And if I were seeing hundreds of tweets fly by every hour, I would miss them. And I would be so sorry. So I put them in a column. And then I can see all the tweets coming through just with that hashtag. It's an awesome way to keep up with things. They can be groups. It can be a hashtag. Or it can be a person. So you put whatever you want in those columns. And you know what? You can have as many columns as you want. I suggest you start with a few just so it's easy to keep up with them. But they don't limit the number of columns you can have. So that's a wonderful, wonderful resource. <clears throat> This is a great site. And if you haven't started using hashtags, you're going to want to think about that. Hashtags are that, that thing with the pound side sign followed by something. And some of the greatest resources come through Twitter chats. And in Twitter chats, they use a hashtag. So you can participate in a conversation with other people who are online with you at the same time discussing the same thing. So it's not so random. This is an amazing site. Cybrain Man, um, he, has, he has a real name, but nobody really knows it, is Jerry Blumenthal. But he has compiled tons of resources for teachers on his sites. And this particular example is his hashtag page. He lists lots and lots of educational chat hashtags. And you can just try some out. Pick them out and go in and join them. And um, I want to assure you that you can go join in a, a Twitter chat and not post anything. Because it's scary sometimes to get started with that. And you don't know what to say. And it's hard enough to fit it in 140 characters. But just join in and watch it flow by. Watch the kinds of things people are talking about. And if they share a resource that you think sounds good, click on that link and open it up. It is great to start out as a lurker. And I'll guarantee you, that's how I got my start. And I, I followed blogs, and I followed podcasts, but I didn't contribute to anything because I was too nervous. And I thought, uh, you know, and why would I, why would anyone want to hear what I have to say? Well, over the years, I've gotten my courage up. And now I'm sharing far more frequently and getting so much more out of it because I am. So check out Cyberman's site with all of the hashtags. 
and see if there's one there that might interest you. They have some very large ones like EdChat and EdChat are huge, and they may have, gosh, a couple hundred people participating. But you don't have to follow those really huge ones either. I'm on a great one called Symbolu Chat, and people are sharing resources through Symbolo, and they share their links. You know how awesome that is to have somebody share a link of an entire Symbolo on a subject that you're teaching about? I mean, it's great. So pick some, try them out. If it's not for you, try another one out. But just consider it. Also, Pinterest. I know many of you probably are using Pinterest, but did you know that there are lots of educators using it to share resources? And it's not just recipes and home design and ideas for gifts and things like that. Yes, people share those personal things, but educators more and more are starting to share things. This is one of my good friends, Laura Candler, and I'll tell you, she is one awesome person to follow on Pinterest. She has boards on just about every subject imaginable for elementary school. It's sort of hard to see on that, on that image, but she has over 40,000 followers. And there's a good reason, because look at some of the topics she's got there. I mean, she's got boards for every grade level and every subject, and lots of them have lots of pins. This cooperative learning board has 487 pins on it. This math teaching resource one has 1,700 pins on it. Literacy teaching resources, 2,100 pins on it. There are just so many great resources there, and you can follow any of those boards that you would like to, which is a real bonus in Pinterest. There are also administrators that are using Pinterest. And Eric Scheninger was one of the first administrators I started following when he was a high school principal. And he was always sharing great things from the administrator's perspective. And I just found that really valuable as a former principal because I still stay in touch with lots of my principal friends. So he's another great one to follow. And you can see he has uh, close to 13,500 followers. So that's a good indication. If somebody has a lot of followers, you know that people are finding value in their Pinterest boards, and you may want to check those out. OK, this is my newest discovery. And it is very new, but it is very exciting. Periscope is something that teachers are now beginning to use to share their knowledge, their experience with other people. It's this amazing thing you do from your, your uh, mobile device. I do it from my iPhone. And it's a video uh, tool. And you hop on there, you click on Start Recording, and you share what you want to share. They're very short, they're usually. They're 10 to 15 minutes long, maybe. I have seen some amazing ones, and I've included links to these on my LiveBinder from a couple of teachers who've been sharing some great ideas about classroom design. And one, one teacher shared several periscopes in a row about uh, setting up math stations, math centers in your classroom. And she's a second grade teacher. And so if you happen to catch it live, it's up there for 24 hours. And then it goes away. So it's not permanent unless you choose to save it. But these teachers are using it in a wonderful way. They're not only doing it live and answering people's questions, but they're also saving the recording and following up with a blog post about it. So um, I was thinking I had a picture of that, but I don't. Um, but they're in the, in the live binder, so check them out. And so you not only get to see the recording later, because it's hard to catch those sometimes when they come live, um, and there's so many of them, but um, having them then share 
and elaborate further on what they shared in that little short video. A great way to do professional development and just share. I think that what I like most about it is it's so conversational. It doesn't require a lot of preparation and a, a lot of time in getting ready to do it. You get on there and you talk and you share. Some people share slides, some just talk to you. But definitely check that out. And Tony Vincent has this wonderful um, um, infographic that's in the, in the live binder that shows you step by step exactly how to use Periscope. So it's something new, something you might want to try out if you haven't tried before. Blogs are another great, great way to connect with other people, whether you're doing the blogging yourself or whether you're having your students do the blogging. Cyberman Man has another great um, section on his site that is all about blogging. This is just an image of the very top of the page, but there are lots and lots of links there that give you tips about blogging, that give you bloggers that you can connect with, Every time you follow somebody like that, you're growing your PLN. And once again, that's what I'm saying, you're charging up your PLN by taking advantage of all of these free resources that are available to us. When your students blog, it also builds your PLN. And I put a, a couple of great links in the live binder from Sue Waters, who is one of my most favorite people um, who uh, shares about blogging. And she does a teacher blogging challenge and a student blogging challenge every year. But in that series, she gives you all the information you need if you want to set up a class blog, individual student blogs, about writing posts, about adding quality comments. All of those resources are right there on that, that uh, blog page for her. So definitely start finding some educators to follow who are blogging. And I guarantee you, you won't regret it. So, how can you learn about all these opportunities and keep track of them somehow? That's the big challenge, and you need to kind of find your own way on that. I love live binders for keeping track of things, but I also use Digo a lot, which, if you haven't used it, is a social bookmarking site. You can make your bookmarks private or public, and you can add um, descriptions or notations to them. And what I love about it is if I've bookmarked a bunch of things on online blended learning, for example, I've tagged those things and I can go back to it in my Deagle library and find just those things that I bookmarked with that tag. I can also share that with a group in Digo. So if I'm working with a group of people that want to know, do you have any good resources on, it could be anything, social studies in seventh grade, I've got that in my Digo bookmarks and I can go to it and find it quickly and share that link with them as a group or list. But build your PLN of outstanding educators who are tweeting, posting on Facebook and Google+, writing blog posts, and look at who they're following. That is the best way to find great people to follow. Find one person that you really respect, you're always motivated by, and then see who they're following and start following them. Subscribe to email newsletters and RSS feeds for the blogs. There are some newsletters that I really don't want to miss. And so those are the ones that I will subscribe to in my email. You can also get notifications through Facebook or through Google+. But for me, the easiest way to manage that is for the few real favorites, I do it in email newsletters. Don't subscribe to too many of those, though, or your email box will be so full you'll never get through all of them. Definitely try TweetDeck for Twitter management to follow topics, people, and groups that are important to you. And share your discoveries and your learnings back out to your PLN. And ask questions to interact with 
people, to find events, webinars, resources. Um, there is so much great sharing that goes on Google+. Plus. So if you haven't explored that, check that out too. And share your discoveries with other teachers in your own learning community, your face-to-face -face learning community, if you have one of those. If it's online, share it with them. But include your leaders, include your principals, your, your uh, department chairs, people like that, and invite them to join, your, join you in your learning groups. Start small. Pick one idea so you don't get overwhelmed. Definitely do that because it's very easy to get overwhelmed. You've probably seen that image of the man drinking out of the fire hose. That's what it feels like when you first get started with social media. And when you're, when you're doing this with people you work with, your students, your colleagues, provide alternatives and choices for the varied learning styles. Webinars aren't for everyone. I found that shocking because I love them so much. But some people really don't like to sit in a webinar and listen to someone present to them. So they're going to find something more interactive, more valuable to them. And they may not want to watch live sessions. They may just want to um, watch the recording and get what they can out of it. I like recordings because you can pause them, go try something out, and come back. Again, invite your principal or your department chair, your, your school leaders to participate with you. So you can have a conversation with them about it after you've participated. And be sure to celebrate and recognize sharing and active involvement among your colleagues. We all love to be recognized and to have someone say, I found the greatest resource that was shared by, and you share their name. If you do that in Twitter, share their Twitter ID. And it, it spreads so much further beyond what just you and that other person might have been sharing. Be sure to celebrate those people, and you know that will encourage them to keep doing it. You know, I have just a few more resources for PD in that binder. I want you to answer one final question, and this is, do you use, I know you're going to say yes to this one, do you use the internet to find free lesson plans and resources? Red X if it's no, and green check if it's yes. And the reason I'm bringing this up, and I've included some of these in the live binder, is that there really are a lot of free resources online that you can be taking advantage of. There, I've already mentioned a bunch of them, but I included a few. Um, in the live binder because many of them discovered some of these, but there are many more than just these few I have on the slides. Learn It in Five are some great videos to learn how to use technology for the classroom. And his videos are all five minutes long. So it's really easy to get through them, but it's a great way if you want to introduce a tool to your students and you don't want to create the video yourself, check this out. And then people add comments to the videos and share how they're using it. So that's a great resource. Um, PBS has some awesome resources, PBS Learning Media. I included the link in the binder for both the Arizona PBS Learning Media and the, the national one, and they'll encourage you to join your own state um, organization so you get resources that are specific for you. But um, you can select grade level subjects, media type if you just want videos, and uh, you'll get some amazing resources there. Discovery Education also has lots of great free lesson plans uh, and other resources. Many people think, oh, well, that costs money. They have subscriptions for certain materials, but they also have a lot of free materials. And some of their videos and their virtual field trips are amazing. Take advantage of those. LessonCast is another place that has a lot of great lessons. Many of these sites have lessons already aligned with Common Core standards. 
and then I do have that tab in the Live Binder just as a refresher that is all about learning to use Live Binders. Um, one tab in particular that I want to call your attention to is a tab that has lots of examples of Live Binders for use with students, particularly the K-12 students. Um, not as much for the university students, but they would still apply. Take a, take a look at that tab when you're on the binder. So think about using these for resources, for PD opportunities, whether you're participating or whether you're wanting people you um, work with, teachers, administrators, and students, to take advantage. Host some viewing parties. Those are so much fun. Go to somebody's house, order a pizza, and watch a recording of a presentation together and then have a conversation about how could we use that in our setting. Lots of online PD available for recertification credit hours. Take advantage of those. Check with your administrators to make sure that they will accept them. But get those um, certificates and use them to get recertified. Host your own virtual conference. It's really not that hard. It's a lot of work, as Connie will attest to. But um, you've saved it then permanently. And it is a great way to share information. Hold an unconference like an ed camp or a teach meet and get together face to face with people. Do some sharing. And there's always an advantage to getting to talk to people face to face. You can't always do it, but when it's an option, take advantage of that. Host a webinar. Uh, you saw that you could even host a webinar on Periscope. So um, offer your own workshops using Skype video or Google Hangouts to bring a, pre a presenter in virtually. And use those short bursts in Periscope and follow it up with a blog post or a recording. So I just want to close with a couple of thoughts. I love this image of this little boy blowing bubbles. And the, and the quote is that we need to move beyond the idea that an education is something that is provided for us, and more towards the idea that education is something that we create for ourselves. And that's what I want to encourage all of you with. This is a great video. If you get a chance to watch that, you will be so inspired when you see it. So use this charge card to help you begin to take charge of your professional learning. And remember, learning takes time. Be patient with yourself. Love that quote, that joke. Just act casual and try to remember which buttons you pushed. <laughs> Sometimes that's not so easy. <laughs> and so now I'd love to have questions from you. I have not been following the chat. So if anyone can join in and um, ask me questions or you can repost them now, please feel free to do that. And I'd be happy to answer them. I know our time is almost up. Monica asked um, how long the live binder would be available after the conference. Thank you for asking, Monica. And the live binder will be available forever. So there is no rush on getting through it. And you can absolutely share it with other people, too. So um, if you find some things in there you like, definitely bookmark those sites so that you can find them again easily. But the live binder will be available to you um, forever until the internet goes down, I guess. <laughs> Any other questions? Not seeing any. Your questions are probably going to come up when you start looking through the live binder and start discovering things. Feel free to email me. And I, I'm going to go back up to that um, slide that's in the Live Binder. It has my uh, information in, on my About Me page. It has my email, and it has my Twitter ID. 
I would love to help you in any way I can. As you see in my image, I said, at your service. And I really sincerely mean that. If there are things that you'd like to know more about, feel free to contact me, and I will be happy to answer your questions. OK, then I think that wraps it up for me. Thank you all so much for joining me. And I want to give a huge shout out to Connie and to her entire team of volunteers for this amazing conference. It has been wonderful. And I appreciate all of your hard work in making this happen. Thank you so much. Peggy, thank you. What a wonderful presentation and what a treasure box full of, uh, uh, of information you gave us. Just um, so much my mind is still rolling. Um, I tried to post those links as fast as I could and I, I constantly reposted your live binder link. So hopefully everybody has it uh, at, at least once and I'll put it in the chat right before I turn off the recording as well. I'm going to put it in there one more time right now. Um, thank you so very, very much. It was a wonderful presentation. And, and I'm going to have to manually stop it. <laughs>